So today's video is all about Shane Dawson and a detailed account on what he has been up to. So I'm going to um, make a meticulous timeline on basically how he got to where he is today. So in June 2020, Shane Dawson faced an explosive backlash online as many of his old controversies had resurfaced. So millions of his fans were outraged and also other content creators had called out Shane's old videos. So the videos that had resurfaced featured him in blackface. Also, he was using the N-word and making some really crude jokes. Some of these jokes, whether they be true or not, featured him making sexual advances on animals. So they were extremely uh, lewd and inappropriate. Also in this video, we're going to talk about um, James Charles, Tati Westbrook, and Jeffree Star. The friends are really all linked, and you can't talk about one without the others. So here we go into the rise and fall of Shane Dawson and his web of lies to help Jeffree Star attempt to take out his rival makeup creator, James Charles. So Tati Westbrook called out her longtime friend and fellow beauty vlogger, James Charles, in her dramatic video called Bye Sister. Well, we're nowhere near done with that epic spectacle, and now Shane Dawson is involved. How is he involved? Well, we're going to get there. The YouTuber has also been out in the spotlight over some past transgressions, you could say. Allegations of predatory behavior, and on top of that, the beauty vlogging community has accused him and Jeffree Star of masterminding James Charles' 2019 cancellation. As a result, multiple brands have stopped working with Shane, and also YouTube has demonetized his videos. Tati has just spilled another 40 minutes of tea. There's a lot to keep up with and I'm going to detail it all for you in this video. So in May 2019 is when Tati Westbrook publishes Bye Sister. She has since deleted this video and in it she accuses James Charles of betraying her by promoting a rival hair vitamin company, Sugar Bear Hair, and also of this predatory behavior. James defends himself on all accounts and he has receipts to prove that this was not true. What does this really have to do with Shane? Well, we will get there. Just bear with me while I, I go through the details of James's defense. So James Charles came out with a response video to Tati Westbrook's by sister allegations. I'm going to detail that here for you as quickly as I can, but with as much detail as I possibly can. So James starts the video expressing his disappointment. He's very saddened and mentions his mental health was greatly affected by this whole incident. Partly through the video, he comes in and says a thank you to Jeffree Star and Tati for taking some responsibility for how far things got. Jeffree and Tati said hopefully they can all move forward with this, but they still stand by everything that they said. Of course they do. And James, for this reason, ultimately wouldn't want to continue a relationship with either of them, at least anytime soon because the allegations made towards him really did affect him greatly. And that's understandable. I mean, he was affected by this tremendously. They did try to cancel him. We can kind of speculate as to why, um, but we really just have these details to go by. And if they aren't going to fess up and say maybe some of this was to tarnish his brand, anyways, who knows. In Tati's video, she is upset because she thinks James Charles orchestrated a big scheme at this event called Coachella to get a contract with a competing hair company. James responds that this was not some scheme. It's just that he was not able to get these tickets called artist tickets for the second half of his stay, which provided security services and it was exclusive for content creators. The reason he wasn't able to get these tickets was because it was just so last minute and he didn't realize that the VIP tickets that he was able to get would be so available to the public. So because he it was so popular, people were of course flocking to him and wanted pictures with him. And because he is so popular, he was getting bombarded and people wanted to take photos with him um, and spend quality time with him. So he was feeling really unsafe. He was able to contact his friend named Nikita, who was at Coachella previously. So she was able to secure him artist tickets and security with the Sugar Bear Hair team. Charles says no money was involved in this transaction. He just made an agreement with them for the tickets. And how he was able to do that was he made a contract saying that he would make a post promoting their hair care line. On Monday, April 22nd, one day after Coachella, James Charles reached out to Tati via text message as a courtesy, basically explaining why he had to do this. He wasn't able to get out of it and... He just wanted to let her know that he was going to make a post uh, for Sugar Bear Hair. Regardless of this, Tati Westbrook wasn't having it. 
A couple hours after this is when Tati uploaded her video and made posts saying her friends weren't supporting her and she felt very betrayed. Fans saw this post and put two and two together, basically pointing it to James Charles. This is when James releases his public apology to Tati and took full responsibility for the situation, which is really commendable of him. And something else Tati mentions in her video, which Charles responds to, is that she didn't know why James was never promoting her products on his page. Um, he does provide multiple receipts showing that this is not the case, and he did promote her page multiple times. Next in Tati's video, she says that he tries to seduce a straight waiter at a restaurant that they went to, um, but the man or boy, she claims, James Charles tried to coerce into some form of relation. She also accuses James of trying to coerce multiple people using his fame and money. James Charles' comment to this was literal shock because he is an alleged virgin. Not only that, but the man in question named Sam came out with his own video saying he was flattered at the advances and the waitstaff wouldn't allow him to give out his number to a guest. It does seem like that they did end up exchanging numbers though because James did provide text exchanges where it shows Sam saying that he was by curious and honestly for Tati to bring this allegation out publicly against her own friend is pretty heartless. This all became so huge and she must have known the damage that she was getting him and herself into. I think this all goes much deeper than anyone can imagine. And my personal opinion is this was a big scheme to take down his makeup company, but we will explain that soon. When I was watching James's video, I do want to mention he is very good at taking accountability for his part in this and saying all the right things. He seems to be a very genuine person and he's a really likable individual. It makes the watcher connect with him as a person, and I think he is really wanting to change. He does openly say he is attracted to men, obviously, and he shows a clip of Jeffree Star's video where Jeffree openly says he's never really been able to find love or relationships because he's mainly attracted to straight men as opposed to gay men like him. He says men are attracted to people like him who look female. Those were his words. And are open to having fun, but as long as it's behind closed doors... Now, I don't really know why James put this in his video. Um, I don't see anything inherently wrong with this, but I don't think playing this right after uh, a clip of Tati's video was a really a good idea um, because it kind of shows what Tati was saying might be true, uh, but I don't really know. Anyways, men started coming forward with claims that James made them uncomfortable and tweeting the messages online. Zara Larson, a popular singer, also came forward and tweeted that James messaged her boyfriend multiple times knowing he was straight. The tweet got almost half a million likes before it was deleted. She did say later on it was only one message. The damage was already done though because the media had already picked up the story and it had since gone viral, saying he was harassing straight men. James Charles said if he had knew the guy was dating Zara Larson, obviously he wouldn't have messaged him. But why would it matter who he was dating? If someone's in a relationship, you just don't message them. I don't know if he had it on his profile in a relationship, but who knows. Anyways, he says Zara Larson is a hypocrite because this is how she found her boyfriend. By making a post seeking him out. The post reads, who are you? Where do you live? How old are you and why are you so fun? And how do you like your eggs cooked in the morning? Do you think this post was wrong? Would you make a seeking this person post? If you found your dream person but didn't know their details. I might if I met my soulmate out and about but didn't get their information and knew without a reason of a doubt they were the one. <laughs> so someone else fabricated a story that James Charles touched a boy in a high school urinal stall and the story blew up of course. They issued an apology when the story was proved fake saying it was just a social media experiment or whatever that means. But of course the damage was already done. People were making fake direct messages acting like James Charles to try and make the story look even more real. Like, I can't imagine making a fake account and messaging someone like this. On Monday, May the 6th, Jeffree Star makes a post about the beauty community and karma. Naturally, James Charles messages Jeffree to see if there was something he needed to know about. But Jeffree says no, it's not about him, just another brand stealing his ideas, so he left it alone. A little while later though, James gets this text from Jeffree Star saying, We definitely need to talk soon. Tati and Shane, plus a few others, told me everything you've said about me over the last six months. I am heartbroken, disgusted, and sad to hear everything, but shockingly not surprised. 
I have only been a great friend to you and never said anything bad about you behind the scenes, which is obviously not the case for you. To which James replies, Let's definitely talk. I do not talk about you behind your back and have not talked to Shane literally at all in the last six months. I appreciate the honesty and I don't want to have a problem with you. I respect you a lot and everything you think I said I will be totally upfront about and we can discuss like adults. I mean I love this response. He's so kind and seems like he really wants to communicate and work this out. He continues with, I'll be home tomorrow in LA from 2 to 8. Then I fly to Australia for a week if you're available. Let's get together and talk in private. Jeffrey didn't respond to this and ignored James so he flew out to Australia. And that's when James Charles saw the Bye Sister video. Right after watching that video, he receives these messages from Jeffree Star. Are you going to respond to everything or are you going to pull a Manny 2.0? When you basically trapped Sam in your hotel room in Seattle, physiologically forced him to stay and made him feel horrible for the pennies you spent on the room, I knew something was terribly wrong with you. When Zach showed me the Snapchat messages of you trying to force him to like you and send him photos, it was completely horrifying to see you use the same sentences as the R word would use. He was so grossed out by your behavior and the way you tried to make him feel for not reciprocating the same feelings. So on June 10th, 2020, this is where stuff starts to get really interesting. In the month of June, during an IGTV video, fellow beauty YouTuber Cameron Lester starts to open up about his experiences with Jeffree Star. He's quoted saying, I just felt like it wasn't a friendship. It was never a friendship in the beginning to start with. It was always something. Like, I was kind of the token black kid. He witnessed Shane call Jeffrey and go in on three months before the James Charles scandal. I knew three months before James had that scandal that something bad was going to happen. June 26, 2020. This is where videos of Shane wearing blackface and saying the N-word started to surface. And in response, he drops a 20-minute video on his YouTube channel called Taking Accountability. In the video is where he references the inappropriate things that he did and the disturbing jokes he made about children. He says, I swear on my life, I am not somebody who would ever talk about a child. Like, in seriousness, I would never talk about a child in any way that is inappropriate. That is disgusting. That is gross. It is not something I would ever do. It is something I did for shock value or because I thought it was funny or like, oh my god, my child M-word character or whatever. So June 27, 2020, this is when a clip of Shane comes to the surface where he is seemingly pleasuring himself to a poster of Willow Smith, who in the poster, she was just 11 years old. Her brother, Jaden Smith, hops on Twitter to write this tweet. Shane Dawson, I am disgusted by you sexualizing an 11-year-old girl who happens to be my sister. It's the furthest thing from funny and not okay in the slightest bit. He adds... This man was also doing blackface on the regular. As the youth, we need to support creators who support us and our morals. This is not okay. Meanwhile, Willow's mom, Jada, tweets to Shane Dawson, I'm done with the excuses. On June 29, 2020, this is when Target has pulled all of Shane's books from its stores. The retailer released a statement saying, We're committed to creating an experience in which all of our guests feel welcome and respected. We're in the process of removing these books from our assortment. Well done, Target. I really do commend them for making the steps to get rid of this uh, creator's content. Sometimes I really do think cancel culture is not always implemented in the best ways. But in this case, I really do think uh, Shane needs to be canceled. He is toxic. On camera, he seems like a great person. But behind the scenes, it he is doing some really shady things and he was caught on camera a few times doing these things um, but obviously not enough and it took way too long for people to catch on. June 30, 2020, Tati uploads another 40-minute tell-all about her May 2019 public feud with James claiming that it was actually Shane and Jeffrey who orchestrated the entire thing. They gaslit her because they're bitterly jealous of James's success. I don't really like this because um I feel like Tati needs to take accountability for her part in this. Um, and, you know, sometimes it is really easy to get manipulated by people, especially when uh, they are so good at it and they've done it for so long. But she also benef benefited from this greatly. So I don't know necessarily how true this is. So Tati claims that Shane came to her house and made horrific allegations against James, even offering to edit her bi-sister video. She's quoted saying, 
I did not make my video because of vitamins. I made it as a result of all the poisonous lies that were fed to me by Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. At this point, Shane takes to Instagram Live and essentially has a meltdown while watching Tati's video, accusing her of lying and also fake crying. He also tweets and later deletes this. So that's everything we have um, for now. I do want to thank you so much for watching uh, and let you know I do have some other videos um, that I'm going to be making and I don't want you to miss those so please do subscribe and I appreciate every single one of my subscribers more than you could ever know. Thank you so much.